Welcome back to the Box Robbins Business Show. Great to have you back. Come on in. Uh, sit a while. We're going to talk about small business. Uh, now, guys, this is uh, episode two of entrepreneurs recognizing opportunities and generating ideas. Uh, and so you need to see uh, episode one and two, you know, back to back. <clears throat> and uh, this is the Fox Robbins Business Show. And uh, this show was all about developing your very best business ideas. Uh, I'm the uh, I'm, uh, co-host of the show, uh, Bill Fox, but the other co-host is this guy, this is amazing. This guy is thermoelectric. Oh yeah. He's so, and he's therefore he is radiant and resourceful. He is Coach Robbins. <laughs> Mr. Bill, how are you? Thermoelectric. <laughs> Coach, is that's not as bad as thermonuclear. Right we're talking now. about this entrepreneur thing, and it's a, it's a, uh, you know, a difficult, uh, difficult task. But we're talking about uh, recognizing opportunities, uh, you know, for business. Yep. Now this could be either starting a new business or picking up an existing one right, or growing one. an existing one right. or, you know, whatever. Yep. And, uh, and we were at, um, we were at, you know, looking, looking for opportunities. Uh, in particular, uh, there are, there are laws and regulations out there. And on one of them we looked at, excuse me, I had one is, um, uh, looking at laws and regulations, look at environmental protection because if there are regulations on, on protecting the environment, air, water, you know, protection, then there are the regulations, then there's a need for companies, uh, uh, companies out there, small, medium, big sized companies to comply with the regulations. That opens up opportunities for new business, mm -hmm. uh, air and water pollution, and also uh, another big area is OSHA, uh, that's occupational safety, and uh, health, health. Excuse me. Act. O S H. Uh, Occupational Safe and Healthy Administration. Right. Okay. Uh, that protects, you know, say, uh, safety needs. That also creates lots of opportunities for business. And then the uh, uh, we also got into we wanted to talk about solving a solving a, a problem in the uh, environment area. Yeah. If you want to solve, if you want to solve a gigantic problem, go solve. The Pacific Ocean vortex, which is trash in the Pacific Ocean, right? Uh, Eight hundred billion tons of it, or whatever <laughs> it is, I know, it's a bunch of lots, plastic, you know. Lots. And go gather, gather it up, and come back and, and come back and sell and, it, and do sell it or do something with it and make money, right? And uh, but there's also in solving a problem would be you know alternative and uh, getting away from fossil fuel, i.e. you know coal, oil, you know natural gas, and so forth into uh, more sustainable clean energy such as wind, wind, uh, wind uh, propellers, solar panels, solar is huge. And, and tide. <coughs> we're, not, we're not making uh, big use of tide. We do have, uh, uh, speaking of water, we have uh, a long-standing you know, clean energy which is uh, 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 hydropower. Yep. You know, river. Niagara Falls? Uh, <laughs> Niagara Falls, <laughs> something called Niagara Falls. <laughs> But now we also have tide and current right. that uh, water, you know, uh, automatic water movement yeah. that you can pick up uh, energy. And how do you transfer that motion in spin a coil, which creates AC electric yeah. current? Yeah. yeah. Now, <clears throat> another one, uh, and and and, and uh, we can move to an, uh, other opportunities uh, instead of solving worldwide problems. You can scope it down mm. and get into your own backyard yep. and still solve a problem sure. by simply noticing a problem, solving <clears throat> it using your intuition, serendipity, changes, uh, or, or even solving your own personal problems, Coach. Yeah, well, if you think of your own problem, like I was talking about in the previous show, if you live in a little village and there's no place to go get a cup of coffee and you got to go drive, you know, eight miles to the nearest coffee shop, be it a Dunkin' Donuts franchise or a... Starbucks franchise, and it might be an opportunity for you to open a nice little uh, village coffee shop. They are springing right. up all over the place in little areas because uh, location, location, location becomes the key, and people like to hang around maybe downtown 
just a little town and there's just no place to hang around, have a cup of coffee and meet friends and neighbors and it's becoming very, very popular to open things like that. So it doesn't have to solve a worldwide giant problem <laughs> to be a nice little niche business, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, <coughs> speaking of uh, getting ideas from the marketplace, even if you want to call, you know, a, a small, small ideas coach, um, you know, you got the, you know, what you mentioned earlier was uh, a thing called niche, <laughs> niche. market. Niche is or niche. Uh, instead of having a market, you know, there's a market like everybody, everybody who washes clothes in their uh, clothes washer at home for Procter and Gamble, they have Tide. Right. That is a big problem and a big solution. Right. We can have a little tiny a problem, oh, a yeah, niche. A nice, a nice little small business, which is what we talk about all the time. And well, the one here's that you one got that you, here's yeah. one that. There's Daisy Rock Guitars uh, in their STP segment target position. They have targeted uh, young, particularly women, uh, guitar enthusiasts who don't want to handle the big electric guitars that are made for the bigger, stronger male and they're doing quite well. Daisy Rock Guitars make a nice little guitar, sounds the same, uh, and uh, they found a niche or a niche, and they're growing the company. I actually had a guy come to me with a totally new guitar pick, and it looked more like a sponge that's curved, and he said it's easier once you learn how to play it. This is a brand new business that he's trying to start, yeah. and, but uh, I, I put him onto this uh, Daisy Rock Guitars, because once once somebody starts to pick with that type of pick, they're probably used to it. So you know they got to kind of train with this other type of pick. But Daisy Rock guitars are for women; they're not for men. Yeah. You know, that's a good target. You know, it's it's not for us. We're hard. Yeah, rock but that we're hard rockers. That <laughs> might have come from somebody from a uh, a, a young lady, a young, a young, a young woman. Say friend. these darn guitars are too big, too too clumsy, too whatever. Can't you make this thing smaller? I don't need. You know, I don't need. I need. I play an electric guitar, and it's just a pickup. I don't need the acoustics of this big guitar. How about a little electric guitar for me, <laughs> Coach? Uh, I want to move on from the uh, uh, tra training your mind to think of new, think of, and see new opportunities. Mm. I want you to talk about the entrepreneur himself or herself. Uh, <coughs> what does it take? What does it take? Give us, give us the scoop. Well, what it takes, obviously, is passion for something. And of course, you know, your own prior experience is a very important uh, builder of being passionate about what you know how to do. It's, it's uh, you know, having passion to do something is critical. We've talked about that thousands of times. But prior experience saying, oh, gee, you know, I love what I do, but I see a problem or I see a need here. And uh, you get out there and you, you, you Find a problem and you solve it, and you solve it better than anybody else, even though it's a small business. Off you go. You've got yourself an opportunity, and that's what this—that's what we're talking about: finding opportunities and then taking the next step and going after them. So, yeah, social networks are a way to find out what's going on, what people are missing. Um, you know, creativity—it's it's all about being creative. Who knew, you know, that we would want an, an iPhone 15 years ago? Never heard of such a thing. Now we can't live without the darn things. <laughs> uh, Coach, uh, also uh, speaking of this entrepreneurship, what do you what do you think about prior experience? I mean, prior to uh, starting or buying a business or, or getting a franchise opportunity, whatever. Well, What's you know, this prior experience? It certainly thing? it certainly gives you a leg up. If you got an experience in an industry or a product or whatever it is, it gives you uh, a leg up. And so it's very difficult to decide. I want to go and be a restaurateur, for instance. I've never cooked. I've never done waitress or wait waitering, and I've never. But I, gee, I want to own a restaurant. Really? Well, you better hire somebody who knows how to do that because you might have a bug to own a restaurant, but you know. You don't really know what you're doing. There's, uh, to start up a brand new restaurant is going to be very difficult. And to buy an existing <laughs> restaurant and run it correctly Many when you've got, you got a long learning curve because you've never been in that business. Many and, try, few succeed. Yeah, many try, few succeed. And that's, of course, a high failure rate even if you know what you're doing. But uh, what is it that you know how to do? And, uh, you know, take that to the marketplace. That's a, that, that's a better idea. But 
if you know how to do some, if you're used to some particular industry or product or whatever, that's usually where you have some passion. You say, geez, I'd love to have my own doing this and filling this niche and I can think I can do it better and that's usually the best place to find an opportunity to create a new business. And uh, that, that, that experience that you, the experience that you have uh, might be that you uh, you have built a social network of uh, contacts. Oh, sure. Yeah, uh, and you can go out and reach out to people and say, "What do you think if I did this?" You know. You also maybe uh, built build an expertise in sa in sales, marketing, and administration, and uh, engineering in manufacturing or and one or some uh, of them. You certainly probably uh, don't computer, have them in all of them. Yeah, computer work and well, absolutely. Yeah, right. And uh, what about social networks? Uh, is that is that a is that a is that helpful for entrepreneurs the social networks? Oh, sure they are because you can tell you can you might have an idea of a business and uh, why don't you reach out to some of the people and you say you know what I think I'm going to start a business doing this. Uh, is this something you would be interested in uh, buying? Would how how would I go about making somebody like you a customer? I mean you can do a lot of research online. Survey Monkey, there's all kinds of them out there. We do these startup weekends. One of the things that we expect the teams to do in those 54 straight hours that they work on their business plan mm -hmm. or their business model is reach out to friends and family and say, you know, we're thinking about starting a business doing such and such. Is this something that you would see give us your money for uh, before you go and invest a fortune and start a business that nobody really cares about? Well, these mod uh, the modern social, social networks uh, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, you know, uh, Instagram, yeah. Twitter. There's ways kind of you can things. go out and do research. They, they say, I mean, statistics are telling us there's a that's a uh, represents a forty to fifty percent increase in finding new ideas yeah, because it can be done instantly. You generating all that communication. You don't have to stand in a supermarket, ask people individually. You can send out, you know, a hundred emails uh, very quickly and say, "Is this something you'd give me your money for if I started a business?" Now there is such a thing. Uh, there is such a thing as a week. <coughs> a weak tie versus a, a strong ties uh, networking yeah. to help to help entrepreneurs. Hmm. And uh, now the uh, uh, part a part of recognizing new ideas is what's called co uh, cognitive factors, is a sixth sense. Or uh, uh, I, I was also entrepreneurial alertness coach. Mm -hmm. And are making you know connections that other people miss, mm -hmm. and I think that that's uh, that, that's critical. I think in entrepreneurial things. Yeah, it really is because uh, you just you know something's wrong. You, you you're a, you you're a buyer. You're out there. You're you're finding that you know you can't get this particular thing the way you want it in exactly that configuration or in the location you want to get it at, and you know certainly you know online has changed a lot of. Uh, a lot of things on my purchasing, of course, has done some damage to the retail area when the retail area is no different than what Amazon's providing, for instance. And uh, but you're, you you just you you sense that there's something missing, and all of a sudden you get that aha moment. Now, ah, I know what I want to do. I want to start a business doing such and such because I see an opportunity there. That there's a gap. We're back to there's a gap, and I don't mean the clothing manufacturer. <laughs> There's a gap in the marketplace, and maybe I can start a business and build a nice little uh, entrepreneurial venture for myself. And there is such a thing. I mean, uh, people who are uh, entrepreneurial in spirit, there is a creativity factor. Yes, definitely. Uh, yep. Preparation, incubation, insight, evaluation. In elaboration, a lot of fancy words, but what does what does all of that mean, Coach? Well, you know, you get the insight, you get this cognition, I guess, if you will, and you say, "Geez, I wonder if I could, uh, if there's a business model that I can build about this idea." I mean, uh, let me let me think about that and let it incubate for a while, and you're driving in your car, and then you it starts to um, get a little bit stronger in your your ideas, and then you start to bring in some other people and. You start to write down, you create this business model that we talk about, this business canvas model. And, uh, and it's kind of a reality check, who, who, who is my target market and, and what kind of people do I need, what kind of partners am I going to need to get this thing done, get this building built. So you do this evaluation, there's a lot of work on it. And then you start to, as it says, elaborate 
fill in the gaps even within your plan that say, I need money, I need people, I need a location, I need equipment, whatever it is that's missing before you get out there and launch your, your idea. So mm -hmm. the, the creativity, st it starts with something that's creative in your mind, but it's got a lot of work to do before you even open the doors. So the, uh, the, entire, the entire entrepreneurial process, Coach, right. is from taking trends that we, trends we've been talking about, technical, social, you know, regulatory, yep. whatever, right. uh, trends plus this entrepreneurial <coughs> sense. Combining those two. Plus the opportunity gap. I see a gap. There's, there's um, something missing here. Equals a potential new, new business, right? A successful new business, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. And it takes a lot of work to get it done, but yeah, you could do that. Now, uh, generating, I mean, taking action now, instead of just uh, maybe not necessarily in, in your own mind, but actually taking steps to think about and create new ideas. There is a creative process uh, well, uh, yeah. called generating new ideas. Uh, talk to us about this, will you, Coach? This is like uh, uh, ideas like brainstorming, focus group, uh, library, internet research. research. Yeah. What, do you, what do you see there? Well, brainstorming, brainstorming is a wonderful technique. I used it hundreds and maybe thousands of times with companies, with people that say, look it, I see a problem here. And how are we going to solve this problem? I want to do what I call, and I got it from a, an author, uh, Give Yourself a Lobotomy was the name of the book, as a matter of fact, that I read, I don't know, 30 years ago. And in the end, the author said, brainstorming is about 100 mile an hour thinking. It's not about judgment. I want ideas. I just want a lot of ideas. We'll judge them later. So and no, no idea is a bad idea. We're not allowed to say bad idea. If I do a brainstorming session with a company, I have a water gun in my briefcase. Yeah. And if somebody says, uh, I, how about if we try this? And somebody else says, well, no, we tried that. I warn them, I will squirt them. Okay, <laughs> I've never had to use it. All I had to do was warn them. Well, you come up with something and I say, I blurt out and say, that's a stupid idea. You're gonna get squirted. We Twice. tried that before, squirt, you know, you're <laughs> gonna get squirted, so be careful. Uh, yeah, I mean, brainstorming is just coming up with, it's 100 mile an hour thinking, it's, it's intergalactic thinking, again, to quote the author, and uh, it's just coming up with lots of different ideas. We'll judge them later, but let's put down as many ideas as we can in the next 10 minutes or whatever yeah. on how we think we can go about creating a business to solve this particular problem in the marketplace. The brainstorming. I had a, uh, uh, you know, a technique <coughs> on, on brainstorming one time is to have a, have a, uh, a round table. Mm. Everybody sits around, ideal like round table. No, no, uh, there's no, there's no head or, or tail. Everybody's at the same table. Right. But also you start, uh, and I start with you, and I say, you know, you're first, but then uh, uh, each person, after each person around the table after you has to come up with a different idea from the one expressed by you or the right. person before them. So you start, the next person has to come up with an idea not the same. Right. And, but you, as you go you around the table, going around the pressure, <laughs> right? The pressure. And the grows. other thing you do is you can pass, but I'm not going to pass you a second time. <laughs> so I'm going to give you, while we yeah. go around the table, an opportunity to pass once. But when we get back to you, you know, we better have another idea. And a lot of times that person will say, "Well, the, she just took my idea. You know, I didn't have any ideas." But that's okay. Some people are more creative than others. But yeah, but no, that's a good a little thing. pressure in the group yeah. is not, but, a, not right. a bad thing. I want ideas. I'm not going to judge you on how whether your idea is good or bad. I just want ideas. That's all I want, brainstorming. You never know what's going to squirt out. And sometimes an eye, something comes up and, say, and that triggers the next person or a person yeah. around. Yeah. Like, oh, I got a slightly different take yeah. on that. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it. Yeah. Uh, now, focus groups, that's, a little, that's, a, that's also a group, but a little bit different. Yeah, that's uh, one you're, you're really trying to, you're starting to narrow down a little bit, you know, the, the the uh, business idea, and then you're bringing in your target audience, so to speak, or target audiences, and now you're starting to talk to groups of eight or 10 or 12 people, and you're asking them specific questions about, would you buy this? How much would you pay for it? How much would you buy in a year? You know, just for, uh, just for examples of what actually, types of I questions. Actually, I have not been on a focus group, I should, but the, uh, I'll tell you, my wife was on a, 
uh, focus group uh, for the local newspaper. Yeah, exactly. Does they uh, want to talk about the, the local newspaper right. as to its you know its presentation, its uh, arrange the arrangement, yep. uh, the topics covered, the t even the size of the type. Sure. Uh, you know everything. Or the, or the uh, everything. You bet. And so forth. And then uh, coaches. This is a favorite of yours. This is a favorite of yours, a special <laughs> favorite, which is li both library and or internet research. Yeah, I mean, everything can be found on the internet if you know how to search. And if you don't know how to search, go, f go find a reference librarian because they are really good at finding unique information that you're digging for, not just data, just information, specific information, but so much can be found on the internet Googling. You don't have to go to the library like I did when I was in school and you were. Yeah. We spent an inordinate amount of hours thousands right. of hours in the library. I always wondered why my name wasn't carved on the Boston Public Library building. <laughs> There's Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. And Coach Robbins. And no Robbins up there. I spent a hell of a lot more time there than they did. You know, <laughs> But you don't have to do that anymore. You just uh, go on the internet. And like I say, if you ask a better question and narrow it down, you'll find some very good specific but answers. If, if you guys, you guys did a listen, if you don't, if, uh, if you know this or you don't, if you don't know this, you go into a, uh, into a library and you want a reference. There, there is, a reference library. There is such a, a reference library, <coughs> but that person's job is to advise you on, on how to search on specifically. On how to search and where to look, you know. So ask them a better question, they'll give you a not better just, answer. Not just the, bo the, the books, but also online. Right. And so uh, be aware of that. Uh, brain, uh, brainstorming, we just mentioned, uh, Coach gave us a good, uh, good ideas on brainstorming. It generates a lot of ideas fast. Yep. And you assemble, assemble a group, you pick a target, uh, and go for it. Um, and also, uh, uh, reminding you, I want to remind you what Coach just said. Brainstorming, what you, I'll, I'll call it, brainstorming 101. Yeah, right. Which is <coughs> no criticism, no criticizing, freewheeling, let her rip, move quickly, yeah, leapfrog. Yeah, uh, everything. Me meaning, you you've got an idea, and I'm three people around that table further, and I said, wait a minute, that's a good, that's an idea, but how about this, which is building on yeah. Bill's idea? Yeah. It's slightly different as you go around the table. Sure, it's right. encouraged because your idea may trigger other ideas in somebody else's mind that are a little bit different. It now. doesn't say on here, but are we supposed to? Are these people, we're supposed to get them drunk. You know, <laughs> you know. I give them a glass of wine, loosen them up. Maybe wine. they'll talk easier. A couple right. of glasses of yeah. Beaujolais. And, yeah, right. And we're off and off and going. Yeah, <laughs> and and we mentioned focus groups. Five or ten people. Yeah, no more. I mean, beyond beyond a dozen at absolute tops uh, is becomes a lot. Expert lot moderator. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. You need a facilitator for these things that knows what they're doing. Absolutely, highly right. trained. There's a talent to, to uh, Oh, there is, and there's a trainer. I I underwent the training, specific training to be a moderator oh, slash facilitator. Absolutely. I told my wife I'm certifiable, and I went out and got certified. <laughs> is, Cody, is there anything that you don't know? I mean, we could just yeah. we could narrow things down a lot <laughs> if we just talked about it. Uh, like I said, I learn stuff every day. We mentioned uh, we mentioned library and internet uh, research. Yep. Uh, gr uh, maybe grossly uh, under underutilized these days. Uh, we mentioned the idea <coughs> of the reference librarian. If you don't know anything about that, yep. you know, try it out. Um, also, we mentioned, uh, you know, trade journals. Trade journals, yep. Is and trade associations. trade associations. I mean, if you're going to be going into, you know, a, a specific industry, there's probably a lot of uh, trade associations. I know I was in the electrical distribution business about 100 years ago, but uh, I was a member of the National Association of Electrical Distributors. I went to their trade shows. Of course, they were in Bermuda, so that wasn't too bad a deal. <laughs> and uh, you know, just the information that you can get, even if you're not a member, you can get a lot of information from trade journals and trade associations. I've spoken to lots of trade associations all over this country, quite frankly, including Hawaii and Aruba, but that's not part of this country. <laughs> uh, Coach uh, was talking about inter uh, internet uh, research. Uh, there are some uh, unbelievably, unbelievably power Powerful uh, <coughs> you know, search, you bet. So-called search engines on the internet. Uh, here's a here's a couple of here. B uh, Biz Miner, yep. uh, ProQuest, Ibis I World, I Ibis World, um, yep. Intel, LexisNexis. Well, that's a lawyer's thing. That's a, a lawyer's, legal lawyer's thing. thing. Yeah, but, right. But 
Well, I, I've told the story before when I was teaching Marquis research at Bentley uh, University. Now it was Bentley College when I was there. And I had two kids that already got their MBA sitting in my uh, market research class. They'd already graduated, already got their MBA. And I said, what are you guys doing back here? Oh, it's one of two things. Either you want to hang on to that student ID because now you're working for a company. You've got to do some serious research for the company for which you work. Yeah. Or you just couldn't stand going 16 weeks without sitting <laughs> in one of my and they're both very intelligent people. They all said, oh, it's you, Professor Robbins. Uh, <laughs> so they're intelligent and they're liars. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they want, to hang, they want to hang on to that student ID card to do the research oh, because yeah. some of these uh, databases, specific databases, cost tens of thousands of dollars uh, in, oh, uh, in yeah. maintaining uh, every year, yeah. Uh, uh, further on, uh, internet research is, uh, you can Google, just Google new business ideas uh, or you can Google, Google mail anything, and, yeah. and targeted research. What's hot in particular industry, yeah. you know, you can go to the restaurant industry, what's pop, pop-ups are hot and just you, what you can find on the internet now, if you know how to search specifically, is incredible. And other techniques <laughs> uh, for gathering information, customer advisory boards, or just go spend time with a customer. You know, that's the first thing I said in my market research class up at Bentley. I said, you know, I'm going to teach you some sophisticated software in this class. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to tell you the most important thing you have to do to, to do some good research. And of course, everybody here, the scuffle of pencils and pens and laptops open up and they're ready to type. Go talk to your customers. <laughs> What a novel, you know, potential customers, if it's a brand new business that you're trying to start, go talk to people and say, what do you think, they're going to steal your idea? You know, don't be so paranoid. You know, yeah, so w would you buy this product for me if it had a little thing on it and I changed it and I patented it? Is this something that you would uh, give me $99 for? No, i pay 49 for it. Get out there and talk to people, right? <laughs> we got we to gotta close this episode, but we've had two episodes, uh, one and two on... Uh, you know, find, uh, generating new ideas and getting into the in, uh, entrepreneurial, uh, into the entrepreneurial spirit, in the, into the groove, and uh, uh, all of the Fox Robin shows are uploaded to YouTube. You just go to YouTube, go to the home page, search box, type in one single word, Fox Robbins, F O X R O B B I N S, and uh, click to the uh, Fox Robbins library and pick out any subject that would be of interest to you and watch it as your time permits. And thank you, and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>